Austrian illustrator Heinrich Leffler was born in Vienna in 1863, the son of the painter Franz Leffler. And having inherited his father's artistic talent and inclination, Heinrich studied at the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts between 1880 and 1884. The earliest dated work I found is this etching made from a Leffler pen drawing in 1888, but nothing more until 1895 when the publisher Martin Gerlach printed the first of a series of themed folios by contemporary Austrian illustrators, and Leffler was one of those chosen to appear in this prestigious body of work. In 1896 he collaborated for the first time with his friend and architectural student Joseph Urban to create the book Roland Snappen, and although monochrome line only, this gave a clear indication of what their partnership might be capable of. But a year later, and despite still being a student now at the Academy of Fine Arts in Munich, Leffler followed this modest success with his illustrated edition of Hans Andersen's story The Princess and the Swineherd. This book had no involvement from Urban and clearly showed Leffler's mature illustrative talent and pronounced ability with sensitive line work and expressive anatomy. In 1898 Leffler designed this poster for the occasion, but the two collaborated for the second time on a highly decorative calendar celebrating Emperor Franz Joseph's 50 years on the throne. This remarkable collection of illustrations was based on any number of Germanic myths, legends and even little actual history, and each was contained within a highly decorative, individually designed border. The work was credited to both Leffler and Urban, and it would lead to more successful collaborations between the two in years to come. And around this time they also became brothers-in-law when Urban married Leffler's sister. The division of labour between the two isn't recorded in any real detail, but it's generally thought that Leffler was usually responsible for the figure work and Urban added the decoration and borders, as well as architectural components within the images themselves. But what isn't clear and is further obscured by the remarkable similarity of their styles is who was responsible for the inking and colouring or whether they both contributed. Either way, this astonishing body of work was responsible for launching both their careers. And it appears that although both had started out with aspirations to become painters, they abandoned the idea in the wake of the calendar's considerable success. Leffler and Urban collaborated again on a beautiful illustrated edition of The Chronicles of the Three Sisters, a fairy tale by Johann Karl August Musaus, written originally in 1782. The book was published in 1900 and featured both monochromes and colour pages in roughly equal measure. And although for this project there were no added decorative borders, giving the work a sparser graphic appeal, the design of the pages themselves contributed greatly to the book's aesthetic success. Illustrations and text appeared in a series of diverse arrangements, and the highly descriptive Gothic line work combined exceptionally well with the application of a limited palette of earthy colours. This publication was very well received and considered a major and influential publishing achievement. At this point there was apparently no stopping this collaborative partnership, and in the same year their co-credited visualisation of the Grimm's story Marienkind was published. This time around there was no clear-cut policy with regard to layout or decoration. Some pages were kept sparse and graphically simple, whereas others were more heavily decorated and pictorially complex. And this more randomised approach to the relationship between text and image made the book significantly diverting for the reader, even if lacking the cohesion of the three sisters. Around this time, Leffler also produced some more poster work with a considerably bolder graphic approach. And between 1900 and 1903, he also worked as a designer at the Vienna State Opera. In 1903, he married the opera singer Minna Wiesmuller and also took the position of professor at the Vienna Academy, which he kept until 1910. As with others of his generation in Europe, he wasn't expected to let his academic position interfere with his ongoing commercial work, and having set up offices and studio space with Joseph Urban, the two worked together and separately for the next 14 years on a variety of projects, many of them for theatrical productions. 
It's also recorded that Leffler's artist father was involved in their business ventures, but I can find no credited evidence. Urban in particular was by this point making a significant name for himself as a theatrical designer, creating sets and costumes for many high-profile operatic productions, not only in Vienna but other prestigious opera houses in both Paris and London. The book Cling Clang Gloria, a collection of rhymes for children written by Vladimir Leibler, was published in 1907, and once more the pictures and design for this book were co-credited with Urban. The results were a major creative and popular triumph. Between them, all manner of imagery from the Solomon devout through to frivolous and absurd appeared in this book. And the creative combination of actual illustration with decorative border was taken to new heights by the pair in this visually engrossing volume. By this point, Leffler and Urban could do no wrong. Both were enjoying the financial fruits of their labours and both enjoyed prestigious reputations as Vienna's most creative sons. This popularity and prestige was further enhanced by their next project, A Calendar of Grimm's Fairy Tales, published just a year later in 1908. Each of the 12 months was assigned a particular story selected from the many on offer from the Grimm's collection. And now a significant element of their collaborations, the beautiful narrative moments illustrated were each surrounded with a dazzling variety of decorative borders, some of which were in themselves extracted from the given story for additional absorbing effect. Both continued to work separately and together in theatrical design, and in 1911 they published another calendar, this time featuring a selection of images taken from the tales of Hans Christian Andersen. This was a truly exquisite body of pen and watercolour work, featuring their highly distinctive approach to the application of bright saturated colour in a series of highly controlled fine brush strokes. Oddly, in this instance, the usual expected border work was absent, not that it was any detriment to the quality of the images. And there may be some who actually find the more elaborately decorated borders somewhat of a distraction. It's entirely guesswork on my part, but this absence may have been due to the fact that this was their last collaboration. In that year, Urban left for the USA to take up the role of art director in the Boston Opera Company, and they would never work together again. In Boston, Urban quickly became recognised for the theatrical designs he created, and not long after his arrival, he moved to New York City, where he designed productions for the Metropolitan Opera. So now, working on his own, in 1914, Leffler published a collection of 12 poems about the life and musical creations of Mozart by Richard Sprecht, with a series of dazzlingly beautiful colour illustrations to accompany each of the verses. The technical approach and application of colour used in these images, each set within oval frames, was significantly labour-intensive and finely applied. And whatever contribution Herbert had made previously during their years of collaboration, his absence was far from conspicuous in this triumphant body of images. And the success of this solo venture indicated a continued stellar career for Leffler. But unfortunately, this was his last significant project. And following a stroke in 1918, Heinrich Leffler subsequently died in Vienna in 1919 at the age of only 55. At the time of Leffler's untimely death, Joseph Urban, a decade younger than his former partner and brother-in-law, was really just getting into his stride in the USA, and although there is no evidence of any narrative illustration work by him, he increasingly found considerable success with stage and film set design for many productions from high opera to more burlesque stage and film productions. And additionally, he worked as an art deco interior and furniture designer. Most significantly, though, Urban spent much of his later career as an immensely fanciful architect. And among his many outlandish creations was the Florida estate known as Mar-a-Lago, currently occupied by Donald J. Trump. But in 1933, he suffered a heart attack following surgery, and like Leffler, Joseph Urban also bowed out early at the age of 61. In the time they worked together, Leffler and Urban appear to have had a symbiotic relationship, in which each could apparently replicate the work of the other. 
and although it would be illuminating to know who did precisely what and how they combined their remarkable talents, I'm happy to settle for having their marvellous body of work to view and admire. And I very much hope you feel the same. <laughs>